Hello everybody, how are you doing? Today is April 8th of 2020. Uh, this is a broadcast live from Miami. We are still in the middle of this pandemic, still at home. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, today we're gonna be, a, uh, we're gonna do the show a little bit different. Uh, last Saturday, I spoke with Gabriela Smith from the Upcycle Foundation. I met Gabriela uh, around May uh, last year during a panel at the Fashion um, Miami Fashion Week. Uh, they made a, a space for sustainable fashion, so she was part of um, uh, one of the panels. And uh, I've always been interested in working with her. It's super interesting to, to speak with her. And uh, today, I, I mean, th at this time, I thought it was um, really important to, to tell you about the work that she's doing. Uh, she's the CEO and founder of her foundation. And her work basically is around upcycling. This is the waste the fashion industry produces and um, uh, she works uh, educating students, doing workshops, TED Talks. So uh, right now she's shifting a little bit on her, um, on her ways as everybody else. So um, I want you to see what we talked about, okay? This was via Zoom last Saturday. I hope you enjoy. Here it is. Gabriela Hello, Smith. everybody. We are here this afternoon, social distancing with Gabriela Smith from the Upcycle Project. Um, we're going to talk about um, the, the, what she's been working on during this um, pandemia time, but also um, about her project that she's been going, she's, she's had it for a couple of years, right? A little bit more. Yes. So, Gabby, how are you? Hi, thank you for having me. It's, I love, you know, speaking to you. Um, I'm doing all right. Uh, <laughs> just kind of like everyone else, I suppose. Uh-huh. A little hard, no? Yeah, it's been, it's definitely been tough. It hasn't been easy, especially with little ones at home, homeschooling, managing work and projects and, <laughs> and staying healthy. I know that's a, that's a goal right now. How crazy! Eh? Everything that was like, oh, I need this. No, it it, it took a second, a second place right now, right? Healthy. That's right. Healthy. We have. A, I like to say we have a closet full of clothes and nowhere to go. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's a lesson, I guess. No, I hope Absolutely. we learn it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, tell us a little bit about the Upcycle project. All right. So the Upcycle. Yeah, so um, the Upcycle Project is a platform that raises awareness on the waste that the fashion industry creates. And I started the project um, thinking about it five years ago, and we started actually doing stuff three years ago. <laughs> um, and so really it started as an education platform. So I wanted people to understand where their fashion came from and where it went and who made it. Uh, so we wanted to go from a linear model into a circular model, right? So, because right now we have a fashion model that's linear, take, make, waste. And that's how we started. We started educating, we started speaking to a lot of different students and doing upcycle projects with universities all around Miami where we would donate forgotten materials and then the students would repurpose them and create fashion that was, you know, good for the planet and good for the people. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of our motto uh, right now. Um, some projects with the students, like specific projects or just education? It just, well, we've done projects with almost, almost all these design schools here in Miami where we donate different types of textiles. We've done towels, we've done bed sheets, we've done denim, we've done uh, forgotten button down shirts okay. from the dry cleaners. And they, the students really truly learn and create fabulous pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, that are all come from upcycled upcycled materials. The materials that would have otherwise ended up in the landfill. Yeah, are they high school students or younger? Or so 
we actually work with university students and high school students uh, because I don't, I, I, there's another organization that specializes in working with children and she's amazing too, but uh, we work with older kids. <laughs> kids do they like it they enjoy learning about upcycling they love it you definitely see like their light bulbs come on um halfway through the program you know at the beginning i get a lot of you know worried phases and they're like there is no way that i'm going to be able to make something cool out of this white old white towel like what are you crazy uh -huh. um but then you know once they do it it's it's awesome and and they really learn and we've gotten a lot of committed students um in, in my team now, in the Upcycle Project team, I have uh, two girls that work with me uh, that participated in our first Upcycle Project with um, Miami Fashion Institute, Miami Dade. Super cool. Yes. Well, now uh, tell us what happened. How did this uh, shift when the pandemic started? <laughs> well, <laughs> our year got canceled. So <laughs> we had awesome projects that we were going to do this year, not only with schools, but, you know, with big awesome platforms around the city and now they're postponed but um so then you know we have um ah, just thinking about that breaks my heart a little bit <laughs> no it's a lot of work no i know yeah and i mean it was a lot of work to get those things in the first place and it's just like fine so, but we're still, we're still here and we're, we're actually making really fun stuff happen. So I'll tell you about that. So through the Upcycle Foundation, so uh, you asked me about what we're doing now. Um, the Upcycle Foundation is a nonprofit and our main goal in the Upcycle Foundation is to be able to recycle textile that was going to go to the landfill. Okay. We focus on collecting textiles from schools and from hotels and then we recycle those textiles back into yarn all right great that's our solve our problem solving kind of <laughs> activity um so at the beginning of march a company called us they do promotional materials mm -hmm. and they had printed 7500 t-shirts with the wrong logo this is wrong Okay. <laughs> you and I probably don't know because we don't work for this company, but um, but yeah, it, they're wrong and they can't use them, but they're brand new, perfect, 100% cotton. Mm -hmm. They could be recycled. Because of the pandemic, we were not able to ship them to Europe where we recycle our cottons and, um, and we had them in storage. Mm -hmm. So we decided to do something with them. And okay. so... Called, we called some seamstresses, and as I was telling you in the Spanish interview, <laughs> we, there's uh, the, the seamstress who helped with fit my wedding dress, works for a really beautiful boutique in Miami Design District, mm -hmm. and she's one of the most talented seam seamstresses that I know, and I called her and I said, uh, you know, Señora Maria, could you help me make some masks? And she was like, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the materials? She's like, yeah, Gabby, I can make masks. And so she did. So look what she's made. That is so cool. Yeah. She's made masks and she's made 500 masks for us in, in two weeks uh -huh. uh, that, we, that we in turn sell in our, in, our, in our foundation page in order to pay for her to make them. <laughs> you were showing me that it has a filter, no? So it's more efficient for the healthcare people. Yes. So the healthcare workers are, um, are, are, you know, they need to wear masks that have been proved, uh, approved by the FDA, mm -hmm. but these extend the life of their PPE already. So you, this pocket here fits a surgical mask. So you put it inside mm -hmm. and then you can rewear it over and over again. And then you can wash this every day. Of course. That is so, so you cool. wash this every day and you continue to use your filter, your, your disposable mask, which so helps. It really protects, no, from, from, from the speed or the, yeah. Yes. So um, you were telling me about the distribution. You, you mentioned the World Red Eye, which are also doing a lot of good distributing things around town. 
they they are photographers, right? It's a company that's been taking photographs since a long time ago here in Miami. I know them well, and um, and they now because there's not events and things like that, you know, which is regularly what they do. They are helping the community distributing, correct? Uh, yes, yes, they are. <clears throat> they um they've been so helpful. Um, they have distributed everybody's donations so they have you know 20 people that do exactly what we're doing providing jobs making masks either for profit non-profit whatever they taking they're taking all of the donations and they're giving them to our first responders in hospitals uh, the miami beach pd and you know the firemen i mean everybody and anybody foster homes they've been doing an excellent job in moving their network mm -hmm. in order to do good and that's really what I find impressive, that everybody, even if you are a fashion photographer or an event photographer or a sustainable fashion activist, you know, like everybody right now is using their resources mm. to do what we need to do right now. So I think that's awesome. Of course, because uh, I mean, I think that um, we get the impression that because we're at home, maybe there's not a lot we can do right and uh at some point it feels like we're uh hand tied like with our, yeah, hands are, tied. Yeah, our hands are tied uh -huh. then, that's a very good point i think that that's a really interesting point that you mentioned because we're not you know where our hands are not tied we have communication we have technology we have a lot of resources that with one person perhaps we can mobilize yes things are slower mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that we can't do it yeah, I think it's it, it shifted, of course, because yeah, it's not the usual way. But um, I mean, I hope we're, we don't stay like this for longer, <laughs> much longer. But um, yeah, it's a way of uh, a time to be creative, no, in a different way. So it's not such a bad opportunity for us that are um, lucky to be able to be at home and and safe, right? So. Uh yeah, no, it's time to, to be grateful for what we have and, and really, you know, this is, I think it's a great time for sustainable fashion in a way. Um, I think that because this is not going to last forever, um, I think that people are going to have a better outlook and a more appreciative look at the things that we do buy and at the things that where they come from, you know, like, I think that this is the first time we've all really been connected no matter what. Yeah. Through one thing. And it's unfortunate that it is a pandemic, but you know, we're going to come out of this in the other side and it's going to be good. It's going to be great. I know. I know. I, I hope we come out with a, a different understanding on the, on the things that really matter, no, which, which is um, unity and solidarity and uh, good in general. What we do is sustainable fash fashion, which basically, relates to the planet and the health of the planet and uh, animals and all of us but you know there's still a, a big struggle in this sustainable fashion and uh, i don't know what you think but i uh, i believe that all of the things that we've been talking about in the sustainable fashion world right now are in our face like <laughs> all, all the little things that not little but all the things that were wrong now they're magnified so you know or we change or we change you know i agree i think that we're we're on that path i don't think that we're going to continue to do and buy for instance i don't think that we're going to buy the same way that we bought before um like i was saying earlier a closet full of clothes and nowhere to go well you know what we don't need as much stuff as we buy and brands need to understand that, you know, there is a limit on how much production we should be making. Mm -hmm. And it's great to have something that nobody else has, you know, that's why I love shopping from people and brands that are, that have limited edition quantities, you know, that they, you know, they made 50 jackets and that's it. There's only 50 other people around the world that are going to have those jackets. And that, that for me is true luxury. You know, it's not, it's not the price point. It's not, you know, a big brand across your chest, you know, that that for me has really no value. I really rather, you know, wear clothes that I know have real people behind them and that the brands actually value the people who make their clothes. So but I they think have a story, no, that, that clothes or whatever uh, articles or garments that they have a story, they, 
They yeah. talk about, like you said, people and communities and the work and the, uh, uh, a network of, of effort. No? Yeah. Not, only, not only just made massively and it has no meaning at all. So I agree. And I mean, we can see it with the masks, you know, like this mask, like I know who made this mask. I know, I know her name. I know her ability. I know how long it took her. I know what the challenges were. And, you know, there's other people around the world that are selling masks that are, that are not ethically made. You know, I found videos of people, you know, working in deplorable conditions, making surgical masks to sell for doctors and different things. And it breaks my heart that we don't think about the impact that we have on the people and the planet. So it's intense. Hopefully, hopefully this, this, you know, brings a different awareness. I was talking about, uh, I was talking about it, yes, uh, last, last show, about the people that are on the other side of the world, that we barely think of that part of, this, of the supply chain of the things that we wear, and they are facing um, really catastrophic, um, a catastrophic situation. It's not only stay at home and, you know, take care of yourself. No, 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 it's really a hunger problem, uh, health problem, it's really terrible. And it, all of these people are the ones that make what we wear. So you yeah. know, need to connect. I think we need to connect, you know, we need to know that this is happening and I'm, I'm contributing to it. I'm making choices and I am allowing this to happen too. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. You're, we have to take responsibility for the things that we do, that we're responsible for. So, you know, when you're shopping for something, know that your dollar is sponsoring something else, whether it is for good or, or, or not for good. Both with your dollar, no? That's what they say. Yeah, I'm reading a book right now that it's a buy the world you want to see or buy the change you want to see. And um, it speaks about that. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's a little bit harder to shop with your dollar if you go, go buy coffee you know at starbucks or whatever coffee brand you go to and it's like oh well where does this coffee come from was it you know is it fair um fair is, it, is it fair trade or is it you know organic or blah blah blah? and like most of the people you're gonna ask they don't know so unless you do your own research prior it's really it takes a lot from the consumer to to shop because i was hearing something and it caught my attention it said ethical fashion or fashion in an ethical way you know do you oh. know it's like it's like this is ethical or i am or i am with my um choices doing it ethically okay you know? yeah, yeah. So i thought it was very interesting because yeah like you buy something and you say oh this is ethical but we're not really, you know. Exactly. Like, what is it really? Like, how do we know? You know, yeah, like the transparency I, needs to be there. Exactly, and we don't do enough research. We research. We just see ethical, and oh, I'm gonna get. And you're it. like, oh, it's great. Um, <laughs> For instance, my friend who's making the T-shirt that I'm wearing right now. It says social distancing, and it's kind of like a, a humor, fun. He's funny. It's very much in his personality, which I love. But he's like, look, I'm going to donate a mask for every T-shirt of this that we sell. And I was like, that's great. Where did you get the T-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, Gabby, why are you complaining? I'm going to give you some money. And I was like, I can't take your money if it's not aligned with our values. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, No, actually, the T-shirts are all made in L.A. And it's, you know, it's not organic. I'm sorry. He says, <laughs> but, but, you know, they're all ethically made. So the people that are actually making these T-shirts are getting paid fair wages and and they're doing it and doing so in in good conditions but i just think it's funny that people say like oh i'm gonna donate and they're like oh yay i'll buy the t-shirt i was like no no like we need to really like go through our value system and really do everything that we can because if not then might as well go to the, you know to a fast fashion store and get a five dollar t-shirt which is not the case yeah i agree well um thank you so much gabby it, it's been a pleasure talking to you um, I'm going to share your information so whoever is interested can um, share and donate and join in any effort possible because yes, we can help and we can, you know, we can do, we can do a lot even if we're at home in quarantine. So um, absolutely. Thank you again. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay.
Sounds like a plan. Thank you for having me, Gado. Have a good day. Thank you, Gado. You too. <laughs> Well, um, this was Gabby Smith. I really enjoyed talking to her. One thing I wanted to mention is that um, there's different levels of value to the work that she's doing because first of all, she's um, recycling, upcycling, clothes that in, in, in another situation will go to the trash. Uh, so that's a great thing. That's, that's the principle of, of the work that she does but also the part that she's contributing. She's, she's creating um, a work that first, it's giving uh, money to people that run out of a job in, uh, because of this situation, which, is, which are the seamstresses. And then um, she's also providing uh, for the healthcare workers these masks. Um, so, just to make it clear, the masks have a, a space in between the, the, the textile where, the, um, where you can put the professional masks, you know, that, that pro uh, the, the healthcare workers use in order to use them as a filter. You know, the, the masks that they use, they put them inside, which provide a filter because uh, we hear o uh, over and over that some of these masks don't protect enough. So the advantage of what she's doing is that um, what you're handling is what she's, you know, the, what they're sewing. So that can be washed and the filter can go inside so they actually work as a protection also. Um, I wanted to mention something. This, there's this common language, maybe unspoken a little bit, the power of this is that it's a global experience that we're all going through, uh, which if I could translate into a word, it's grief, because we lost our basic uh, freedoms, uh, because we cannot be with our loved ones, you know, our, 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 our basic, um, understandings uh, oh, and, and, and ways of, of, of interact and communicate and work have been taken from us. So there's this language or there's this feeling of grief. And I wanted to suggest, if I may, to engage in some positive activity because it will help us heal, of course, and by a positive activity, I mean volunteering in some way. I, I always like to volunteer and, and I find myself a little bit frustrated and with my hands tied because I, I, at the very beginning, I thought I couldn't do much. I, I, I thought about this or that, but because of the social isolation, the social distancing, there's not so much I thought I could do. but. There's actually things that we can do in order, of course, to help somebody else, but in order to heal ourselves, to feel a little bit better because we all are going through this. This is, this is the common feeling for all of us, the, the loss and the desperation and frustration and in, in some levels uh, for, for you and for me, and some of us are lucky to be home and working and with all our needs taken care of, but there's people that are really struggling and there's people that have uh, family passed away. So um, I, wanna, I wanna invite you to, to contribute in, in any way. What, uh, the work that Gabriela is doing, I think it's a great way to you can donate money, you can buy a mask, like a virtual mask, you buy one, so sh they have the, the, the means to, to do more. Uh, so if I could suggest that, but I think that we all need that healing uh, very desperately, some of us more than others. So um, 
that's it. I wish you the best, patience, love. We're gonna get through this, hopefully sooner than later. And uh, I will see you next Wednesday at 1 p.m. We have our broadcast at 12 in Spanish and in English at 1 p.m. every Wednesday. So thank you so much. Here is uh, Gabby's um, link if you're interested in donating. And um, I will see you soon, okay? Take care.